John Gill, thank you for joining us. Thank you. So how surreal that must feel. Uh, how, how, how does it feel to, to see the end of that after all this time? Obviously, huge relief. Um, and I think a sense of achievement also in terms of having been able to navigate through a lot of challenges and, and integrate a lot of different work streams to be able to deliver on the departure at long last of the vessel and everything to do with the OS35. A lot of firsts. Yes. <laughs> so in your jib talk, you actually mentioned um, at the time there were certain things that you, you couldn't tell us. What can you tell us now? <laughs> Put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I think the communication from the captain to VTS was not helpful at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and one of the main points was when the contact occurred, uh, the captain stated that he had not had contact and he had no damage. Mm -hmm. So the, the incident happened at around uh, seven minutes past 10. The vessel was beached at an hour later, mm -hmm. but we actually lost 25 minutes. I think we've actually got images at the moment uh, showing the, the chronicle uh, of um, events as it happened. Uh, but as you were saying... Yeah, so uh, at the end of the day, VTS and the Port Authority can only take decisions based on the quality of information provided. Mm -hmm. When we are given erroneous information, uh, like we were on the night by the captain of the vessel, uh, the decision-making is consequently affected. So by the time that the captain admitted that he had had a collision and he was having water ingress, we lost 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean that the outcome would have been much different. Um, with such a small time frame, beaching the vessel was the only viable option. So with that in mind, do you think we need to monitor ships leaving Gibraltar now, which isn't done at present? We do. I mean, uh, going back to jib talks, uh, part of what I was explaining is that before the incident happened, uh, the VTS uh, control team was actually zooming one of our thermal imaging cameras on the ship because they were seeing uh, that the maneuver wasn't uh, going the way it should be and they were contacting the vessel. So it's, it's not that we don't monitor vessels departing Gibraltar waters. So will you be making any representations or have you made any moves in trying to change the way certain things are done here to avoid in incidents like this in future? I think we constantly do that anyway. It doesn't, it's, we certainly do that when we have near misses, when we have uh, what are undesired circumstances which are observed. So we, we go through, we have ISO accreditation in the organization and that uh, calls for constant improvement and you learn from every every single observation that you take so it doesn't mean that we only look at internally at what we do on the basis of a large incident we do that all the time so obviously on a larger incident it will be a much more in-depth review uh, and as i've said we we have an independent investigation uh, report which is currently waiting to be internally reviewed by the gpa team which will ultimately be then uh, circulate. You've mentioned uh, in the statement issued today the number of um, companies and organizations involved in this whole operation. Um, just to give us a sense of the scale of this operation, how, how many people have been involved with this, would you say? I mean, Kula, who are the contractors appointed by the insurance who actually did the, the actual lifting, they had a team which was in the region of 50, between 50 and 60 operators. Mm -hmm. Uh, add to that the crew of the tugboats that they had, uh, add to that the uh, oil spill contractors for them, uh, which was another 1015, the GPA subcontractors for oil spill response, another 10 man team, then the launches that we were operating. So, I mean, you, you're going to. Getting to 100 then. Exceeding 100. Definitely. Okay, very briefly before we go, it's been a long almost year as you've dealt with this situation. It's Friday night. What are you up to tonight? Definitely celebrating. Excellent stuff. Captain of the Port, John Gill, thank you for joining us. Thank you.